one. Tired of wiping on the same boss for hours? Die, insect. Can't seem to win against that new druid deck? My thanks to you. Are your teammates not standing on the payload? Quit lollygagging. Get on the payload. Well, grab a drink and pull up a chair. This is the Game Case Show, your Blizzard Entertainment podcast. Here are your hosts, Cuddles and Turarts. Well, hello, hi, howdy, and welcome to episode 88 of The Game Case. I am Chris, also known as Cuddles, a brewmaster monk on Airy Peak in the Convert to Raid Guild. And I'm Turart, a beast mastery hunter, also in the Convert to Raid Guild on Airy Peak server. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about our week in gaming, answer some questions from the Cuddle crew, and then we're going to be talking to one of my favorite members of CTR, an absolutely wonderful, incredible, and amazing Hearthstone streamer. He is almost a legend in Hearthstone. See what I did there? I did that. Nage, how are you doing tonight? I am doing fantastic, Cuddles, Turarts. Thank you so much for having me on the show. We are so glad you're here, and you're taking time out of your very full schedule to be with us. Um, you know, how was your week of life? Oh, it, it it's finally getting nice here, and yes. so we had temperatures in the 80s, so I got to, like, go outside and, and start walking some more before, you know, it's snow and cold and yucky, and <laughs> I, I'm trying to be active, you know, with the with the weight loss thing and so getting to be outside and walking and that is just so much so much fun you know the streaming is going on as you as cuddles mentioned got to work late on friday oh, awesome you know you gotta <laughs> love working late on friday or thursday thursday it was late on thursday and then we went to uh uh eve my lovely wife and i went to the guardians of the galaxy yesterday and saw a pretty good movie if i do say so myself so pretty full week, and then we're wrapping it up here. What what better way to finish up a weekend than hanging out with you guys, talking Hearthstone, talking gaming, talking geek? Aww. Oh, yeah. Couldn't plan it better myself. This is this is definitely this is something that uh, we've really been looking forward to. So thank you for taking some time. Um, but why don't we dive into what we've been up to this last week, either within or outside of the Blizzard universe? Mage, why don't you kick it up? Why, what have you been up to with uh, gaming? Well, uh, obviously Hearthstone is my game. It it has kind of taken over my as my primary game. It uh, so I the new the new season started on Monday. So got to rank four last month for the first time, and now this month we're starting over. So had played played a bunch of games and I'm up to rank or I got as high as rank 13 and oh, I wow. fell back to 14 with a couple couple losses and then played in the arena on Friday night and got my first ever 12 win arena run so that was awesome and uh that the other thing is so a couple weeks ago the CTR had a mini meetup in Minneapolis and uh, I went there and kind of got the itch back to get into World of Warcraft, which I hadn't logged in since January. So well, Eve and I logged back in and we'd been working through some of the Broken Shore content and trying to get all the artifact power to start upgrading the weapons, uh, upgrade the weapon past uh, level 35 or whatever. So that's... Uh, uh, that's that's where I've been 
this week. How about you guys? Um, I will dive in first. I have been back in WoW too, but a little different. I am leveling a shaman to start raiding with iTunes because they're going to be doing Lich King, and that is my favorite expansion ever. Um, and so I want to go in and dive in and kind of do that at level. So my little shammy healer, it only took an hour and a half to get her from 17 to, I think she's at like 38 right now. It's super quick now. Like they have since the last time I leveled someone, it has gotten very, very quick. Um, so I've been doing that. And then like we talked about last show, I'm dabbling in the streaming a little bit. So um, Mass Effect is the game that I'm doing for streaming. And oh, Lord, <laughs> there are some scenes in there that I was not prepared for. It is it is a more adult insinuated game. I guess is my best PG way to say that, but uh, totally not prepared. So there were a couple moments on streams where I, I kind of lost my, my calm a little bit. And last night I was on, or not last night, but Friday I was on Azeroth Roundtable with Ben and John. And at the post show we were kind of hanging out, and they're like, I was telling them about, oh yeah, there's that you know that awkward scene with the consort where a lot of stuff's insinuated, and they're like, oh there's tons more. Like you get a pick. I'm like, oh lord. I picked a bad game to stream because it's going to get, whew, <laughs> did not realize what the M rating was for, did not realize. So that'll be fun. But um, other than that, yeah, I've been just doing the, the getting my tune up to 80 because I want to raid with iTunes. Very exciting. Um, Cuddles, what about you? What's your gaming life been like this week? So those of you that, that know that I stream know that I, 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 I frequently say that I'm a space and sci-fi, and I've now added variety in that description. Uh, streamer. Uh, this, this week I did, like, little to no space and sci-fi. Or, like, everything was a stretch. Like, it was the week of Cuddles wanted to shoot things. So we played Doom. We played Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Um, I have been... I have gotten into an MMO that is not WoW. Um, I'm playing Destiny. What? You're cheating on WoW? I'm playing yes. Destiny, which I know is not traditional MMO. Um, but it has a lot of the, the rating, the loot grind. The it, It's alarming how much I'm familiar with Destiny compared to the first time I played it. Just because I now understand a lot of the concepts in the, uh, the game, like, things that are going on. The game mechanics. So, um... We definitely, uh, I, I, I'm almost level 40 in Destiny now, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully start raiding soon. And uh, then, thanks to a member of the Cuddle Crew, Squinty Eyes, Cuddle Wife and I uh, played Outlast 2 on Thursday night. Oh, God. Um, that game is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is terrifying, and it scared the crap out of me. Um, so, luckily, luckily, well... Luckily, I will not be playing it this Thursday for a, a somewhat unhappy reason. Cuddle Wife is out of town for the next week, so I am on my own. Adulting will be attempted to be done. Very, very luckily, I have two wonderful friends uh, that actually joined me on Friday stream, um, Coffee Bean and MCX, that are going to be uh, like they're like making me dinner and and making sure I don't you know burn my Taking house care down. Of you. And, yep. Yeah, they're they're being they're being they're, very they're, good. They're your pseudo babysitter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they they are being very good uh, partners and 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 helping us out a whole lot. Um, she's actually Coffee Bean is going to be calling me in the mornings to make sure I'm awake <laughs> to get my kid <laughs> to school because I'm terrified of that. But um, yeah, that was that was my uh, very long explanation of my week. But guys, we are going to jump into questions from the Cuddle Crew. If you're wondering how you could submit questions. If you're listening to this, guess what? You're already part of the Cuddle Crew. Welcome. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Your face is wonderful. Um, but you can go to bit.ly slash Cuddles Discord. That's bit.ly slash Cuddles Discord. Um, go there. We have a voice channel or a text channel, rather, called Questions for the Show. Type your questions in there. We will read them out live on the show and ask them of our wonderful guests. So this week, we do have a few questions. Our that first one do. comes to us from Crab People and... I'll let you go ahead and read it. Awesome. So Crab People asks, is our Bay Area Tavern Brawl the strongest area in the nation? We have Trump, who's a popular streamer and Tempo, or Tempo Storm team member. Hot Meowth, top eight at the last Hearthstone World Championships. And finally, Shoop, recent winner of DreamHack Austin. 
makes it hard to win these local tournaments when it comes to those three. So what would you say, Major Death? Is that a pretty strong tavern brawl area? So I so I don't know where all of the pro players play, but man, that would be a very, very tough fireside to win. They uh, tr- Trump has been kind of one of the pioneers in streaming of Hearthstone and is somebody that I watch a lot. He he's he, he is a very, very popular, popular Hearthstone streamer. I'm actually uh, got started watching or I guess got familiar with Hot Meowth last year during during some of the uh, HCT events, the Hearthstone Championship Tour events. And so he's he was he was really good and, and was one of the top finishers and, and got a BlizzCon invite. And yeah, Shoop, the most recent winner, there's like two weekends ago winning Dream Half Dream Hack Austin. I, I I would think it would be exceptionally difficult to uh, to find a better a better area that has uh, uh, a a group of of players like that that you would that you could potentially go up against at a at a uh, at a fireside. So I I have the pleasure of of being here in in Central Florida, and we have we have a wonderful wonderful. Um, fireside community amy jansler um garrett weinsler from uh the angry chicken um we get willie dills down here every now and again for him um a bunch of like really cool kind of personalities but i don't think we've ever had like (laughs) i darn sure would be terrified to sit down across from any of those people i think trump would be the one that i would recognize the easiest but I always, I always kind of wondered that, and I know you, I know you said that you don't know where a lot of the pl- pro players are from, but do you know is this at all common? Like, is Raynad going to firesides? Are we seeing like Savits at like, 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 are, are, are these people going to these things, or do they just skip them because they're that good? I, I think they're probably spending more of their time doing like open tournaments, online tournaments. And then they're going to the DreamHack Austins and the and some of the like the preliminary things. Anything that basically they could earn HCT points at, that's where the, that's where they're going to be. So going to PAX East, going to DreamHack Austin, going to you know all all of those sorts of things. Though those those aren't going to be uh, like your your local fireside or like the 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 well the guys. Uh, J.R. Cook from the Well Met podcast was talking about the Kansas City Fireside. I'm not so sure that you'd see that caliber of pro player at those, but I, there's still probably lots of legend players and things like that that you're going to see at those sorts of events. So none of those events are going to be a cakewalk necessarily, but you're just maybe not going up with the the guys that you're going to see when you when you tune in for for the HCT regionals or, or, or one of the, uh, the champion, the spring or summer championship sort of thing. Nice. Nice. Well, guys, make sure you get out, get out to your local firesides. Go, go, go to some of these events. I know Orlando is actually a regional qualifier now, so maybe we will start seeing some of these guys. Um, and they're also starting up a Tampa one. So sorry, little plug for my friends. Um, Root, Freckleface, Amy Chancellor, and uh, Garrett Weinsler um, for, for everything that they put together. Um, I'm sure I'm missing someone there. But, T, why don't, why don't we go ahead and jump into our next question from yeah. Totem. A uh, totally drunk ass. Consistency and success in arenas has always been an area I've needed improvement in. I tend to average four to five arena wins. Do you have any general drafting tips? Have you noticed any trends in arena with the release of jury to journey to Unguro? So, uh, totally. That's actually probably about where I am. Typically when it comes to the arena, I I'm in that same, same kind of area as far as uh, win rate there. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to provide too much, but I, I do know that, there is, I mean, the change that we had uh, last month with the with the introduction of to Angoro, as well as the 
rotation out of those uh, previous expansions has made the uh, the arena a bit a bit interesting, I think. And actually, it, it probably started a month before that when they switched arena from wild to standard mode and, and also changed the offering rates on rare cards, on epic cards, and on legend cards. So now you're seeing a lot more rare cards. You're seeing probably three or four times the number of epic cards in a standard arena deck and you're actually seeing legendaries i mean it wasn't you now you're going to average like almost a legendary per deck as opposed to maybe a legendary every five to ten decks that you would that you would draft the the general strategy or the general thing that i've heard is that the 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 game starts kind of on turn three so you want to make sure that you have minions that you can play good minions on turn three and you, you're spending a little less kind of effort or cards on cards for turns one and turn two, though those are usually kind of bonus if you have those. But starting on turn three, you want to make sure that you have an, enough minions in your deck so that you can play it a minion on turn three and then you're going to be able to play a minion on turn four and then you're going to you're going to want to have spells or some removal to kind of start to inner to to deal with whatever your opponent's doing probably starting on turn five and it, it's exceedingly difficult because you don't have any control over the cards that you're being offered in the draft you basically you get you know you pick your class you get offered three cards for each one of the 30 slots in your deck and you just kind of have to pick the best card you have and and kind of as you're going you're you know you you probably start out picking like the best cards that you can and then as you get to about turn or the the 10th to 15th card then you're going to have to start figuring out okay so what do i still what does this deck still need does it does it have aoe that i can deal with a wide board that my opponent has or does it have a a single target removal or does it have a big minion that i can go uh hit them in the face with or or somehow uh you know fight for the board if they have a big minion and uh that that's it's 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 kind of I haven't I haven't had consistent enough success that I know that I can that that um, I can provide real great things beyond that. But it, it it's it is it's still very much you're trying to play minions every turn and trying to be able to have options to remove your opponent's minions any any chance you can get really. If that makes any sense, I feel like I rambled on for no, <laughs> no, no good kind of purpose. No, it's, there. it's it makes sense. At least it did to me. So the by the way the the journey to Angoro, uh, so journey to Angoro the changes in arena or constructed. There were more taunt minions introduced in Journey to Angoro than any other expansion in the history of Hearthstone because they wanted to slow down the the meta because people were talking about mean streets of gadgets and and pirate warrior and aggro shaman yep. and you know now we've got token druid and we've got all all these all these uh decks that potentially can just blow you out of the game before you even get a chance to really play any cards so they introduced a whole bunch of minions or a whole bunch of taunt minions they also introduced poisonous as a keyword which is this minion when it attacks and injures a creature no matter what it is it kills it and oh. so those minions i it, there's now a bunch of them plus the adapt feature means that any minion with adapt could potentially have have uh poisonous as well so there's just so many more ways that if you play a big minion that it can be answered by by like a, a spell or a poisonous minion or something like that or a, or a taunt of some kind so that's kind of the biggest thing is i the the 
the meta has slowed down, maybe not as much as some people would like, but it's because of the all these taunt minions that were introduced and the poisonous mechanic. It gives the little guy a fighting chance. Yeah. Well, Totem, Crab, thank you so much for those questions. Mage, thank you for those great answers. Um, why don't we go ahead and jump into the meat and the potatoes of the show? And for that, Mage, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, goodness. So I was born in... No, just kidding. <laughs> so, obviously, a geek. Long-time geek, long-time gamer. I am a web designer and developer in my day job, my alternate, my alternate life, you know, <laughs> the thing that, that pays the bills and allows me to play video games and go to c conventions and things like that. Obviously, I'm an aspiring Hearthstone legend <laughs> and, uh, you know, get it getting closer and closer by the by the month so maybe maybe uh maybe sometime this year that'll happen uh as you guys have have mentioned I, i'm streaming hearthstone as well three nights a week monday wednesday and friday nights and i'm having an absolute blast with that i've been doing that since mid-november after getting back from blizzcon 2016 but i've been wanting to get into podcasting and streaming for I think you and I, Cuddles, talked about it at BlizzCon 2015, and yeah. I spent an entire year not doing anything about it, and uh, I, I finally was like, I'm going to do this. And so I, I actually told uh, Eve on the, on the uh, flight home that this was something I wanted to do, and I was going to actually do it. And within two weeks of, of Blizz getting home from BlizzCon, I had, I had started and, and had started streaming, so... That was, uh, I, I'm very happy with how that's gone. And uh, I'm married, obviously, to my, <laughs> my, my supremely better half, Ivalani, e who, as you noted, is in, in the chat room. We're going to be married for three years in Aww. August. We actually celebrated our, our honeymoon at BlizzCon 2014. That was the first time either of us had been to a BlizzCon before. And uh, I don't know the, I you you can probably bribe me with pizza and popcorn. So in, ca oh, in case thanks. you need to know that, in case you need to bribe me for any reason, <laughs> popcorn and pizza will probably be able to do it, and probably some Diet Mountain Dew as well, for whatever. Now, that's worth. we've had this discussion before on the podcast. Are you a deep dish or are you a thin crust? So because I'm at, be, because Eve and I are doing the, the weight loss thing, I've gone from a deep dish guy to a thin, thinner crust guy. I don't want, I don't necessarily want like a uh, paper sort of crust. <laughs> so, so I, I need, I need some bread on my, on my pizza. Otherwise it's not pizza. It's just like topping <laughs> and while the toppings are great, you know, cheese, pepperoni, olives, all those good Ooh, stuff. Olives. That's I'm great. glad you said that. Yes. Oh, Eve would kill me if I didn't say olives. <laughs> olives and pizza, yes. Uh, specifically green olives. The, the Eve will tell you green olives, not black olives. Black olives are terrible. Uh, that would be her <laughs> comment. I personally like black olives. But over over the over the time we've known each other, she's converted me from a green olive skeptic to a uh, green olive believer nope. olives olives hold one place in this world they are horrible beings i hate you and they should no. be drowned in a no. glass of vodka that is the only place that is a good place for them to put belongs no, i, I like them said. in a bloody mary as well yeah, yeah but, uh, oh, okay yeah I'll, I'll agree with that one nice. um no okay so I, i'm glad that she said that i was i was gonna ask because i I'm a total pizza addict and I'm like going through my own like weight loss journeys and, and whatnot. I've never been able to cut. Like I've tried the pizza with the almond flour. I've tried oh. the, you know, like the whole grade. And it's just so like pizza doesn't deserve oh, that treatment. Yes. Like pizza just needs to be. However, I did where um, Cuddle Wife and I are doing keto 
and like off and on, but um, I did a mitza, which instead of bread for crust, you use sausage and form a pizza crust with it in like a cast iron pan and then put <laughs> sauce and cheese and toppings on top of that. And that is the one thing I will say that I'm willing to like substitute the bread if you just put more meat on the pizza, I'm totally happy with this. Because I'm, like I'm like a meaty pizza kind of guy. Um, and actually, total aside, but very brief, huge thank you um, to Dragon Tamer, a, a wonderful member of this community, who actually sent me a pizza on stream on Friday. Oh, um, really? We <laughs> Turn were, your that's cinco. awesome. We were, we were doing a bit of a Cinco de Drinko stream. And I needed some food, so thank you, DT, for providing that. That was that was that was quite nice. Um, but before we dive into Hearthstone and all that, can you can you talk to us a little bit about? Because um, I, I I think that this guys I know this I know this isn't truly Blizzard Entertainment related, but let let's go ahead and throw the throw the stereotype out there and embrace it because it's true of a lot of us um, that we that we struggle with weight in some fashion. Um, and, and Mage and Evilani have come along an incredible and really and truly inspiring journey. And I'd love to hear from you a little bit about what, what that's been like. And just, just give us the whole thing. I want to hear this story. So, yes. Yeah, so, so Eve and I started, started uh, working out in Eating Better last April, April 2016, when uh, there was a group that wanted to get f fitter at least or fit get fit or get fitter at least for the warcraft movie meetup in minneapolis in uh last june and we decided that or eve actually more than i did decide that she wanted to do it and wanted to be able to have me kind of help her with it and be supportive of it. And th I think there's no actual better way of being supportive of somebody when they're doing something like that than going through it with them. And so even though I wasn't necessarily, uh, it wasn't necessarily my idea, I, I decided to start doing doing the same things she was. And uh, we, we started April 4th and we just, we, we have uh, a treadmill and we have an elliptical machine in our house that we bought previously with the idea that we were going to work out and they never got used. And finally, we're just like, we're going to use these things. And we completely changed our diet and said, you know, we're going to limit calories. We're going to limit fat. We're going to eat healthier things. We're good calories, you know, lots of protein we're, we're not going to cut anything out of our diet because if you, it, it's our feeling that, you know, if I like pizza, I, if the, the best way to sabotage me is to say there's no way you can have pizza yep. ever in any way, shape or form. But what we did do is we found ways of having the things we liked, but making them differently so they were healthier for us. So when we'd have pizza, we would have them on a flatbread and you and so rather than like a big, you know, uh, thick crust pizza, we were having having it on a on a on a flatbread. And so the calorie count went down and, we're you know, turkey pepperoni versus regular pepperoni and, you know, fat free cheese and all this sort of thing. And so it's just like it, it just made it a healthier option. And, and we just and then we worked out every day and and tried to just be active and it started with just walking a few days or you know for about 30 minutes and then we try and do 30 minutes the next day or tried to bump it up a little bit and little by little we just we just kept doing it and you see results pretty much instantaneously i mean when you when you make a change like that you you do see some pretty some some results pretty quickly and and when you see those results it just kind of reinforces what you're doing and you just keep doing it because you're like, I, I, I like the fact that I lost four pounds this week and I want to keep <laughs> doing that. So, yeah. So, and, and it just, it snowballed and, and we're, we're, we've been, we've been doing it. We've both reached 
our goal, our initial goal that we had uh, for the weight loss we wanted to lose. We kept going past the the Warcraft meetup, kept going, trying to look better, you know, do even more before the BlizzCon last year, and we're continuing to do it now. Even even though we've gotten to some of these goals, it's still now it's habit more than it is just a choice. And so now we're doing your, you know, I'm a, I'm a little less strict about it. You know, I actually get, we, we went today and actually went to a pizza place and, and a pizza by the slice place and, and got some, some pizza there. It wasn't something we would do last year, but it's, it's something we'll do now. And, uh, you know, just, as long as you portion control, like, like you were saying that it, it, you can, you can make things work. But you also do do need to be active too. So, yeah. yes. Two two things that I want to I, I want to pull out that that you said there, um, and if anybody if anybody is curious about this, and I'm I'm coming from the point, I'll let Mage throw out some numbers that'll that'll knock you on the ground, because mine mine aren't nearly that impressive. But I think I'm down probably um, about seventy pounds for my heaviest. Um, and cuddle wife about 40. Um, she's actually now wow. become a personal trainer. Um, nice. not, not in living. It's something she does kind of as a hobby, but she is a licensed personal trainer. And it's something that we, we've taken a lot of interest in. Um, you, th- one of the worst ways to fail on a diet, and Mage, Mage said it, um, is, is feel like you're on a diet that you're depriving yourself of, of something. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you really love ice cream... Or for Mage and I, you really love pizza. Eat pizza. Go for it. Just shift your... For me, I had to shift my mindset from, well, any size pizza is a personal pizza, if you believe it is. <laughs> and I've been there, done that. Literally, there's, there's, a, there's a pizza place here in town that does really thin crust, and I, I like really thin crust. Um, wood-fired pizza that does 12-inch pizzas. And that was a personal pizza for me. Um, that's not as good as, you know, I now eat maybe a quarter or less of it. Um, but I still get my pizza fix. If you like, like Kaya said, rice and quinoa, um, eat it. Just don't eat. I, I, have, a, I have a lot of um, friends down here that are, um, that are part of the Cuban or um, Puerto Rican community that rice and beans. You are not going to, if you live in South Florida and you grew up with any sort of Hispanic r- relations, you're going to have rice and beans everywhere you go. And instead of making that your entire plate, get a smaller portion. Make make the small changes that Mage mentioned, like getting out and walking. Um, yep. And I will tell you, getting getting active, Mage, Mage said this at the very end, and I kind of wanted to repeat it because I feel like it's important. Um getting active you can you you want to see maximum results exercise four four or five days a week and eat six small pre-portioned healthy meals and and eat clean and but who wants to do that like nobody wants to do that so you know what go out and get more active than you are right now and if you want a double bacon cheeseburger once a week go have a double bacon cheeseburger you know what you're going to be healthier than you were Maybe not as "quote unquote" healthy or as weight loss conscious as you could be, but you're going to be doing better than you are. And I, I think anybody that's out there striving to get healthier or feel better about themselves or their bodies, guys, I, I applaud you, and and it's a truly an amazing thing. Um, Mage, I know you were posting numbers for a while. Do you have like a mm-hmm. current, like, do you, can you can you? Because it's impressive. Do you, so. So as of so so right now I am down 120 pounds from where I started. I was 308 pounds when I started this, which was the heaviest I've ever been at any point in my life. And in fact, you know, it's it's interesting because I had uh, a medical issue in my mid 20s where I needed to lose weight once. And I actually did lose a bunch of weight. I lost about 80 pounds, got down to about 200 pounds. And, and the, 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 the medical issue subsided. And 
I was running. I, I ran a half marathon. I did all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I love this. I <laughs> This is me. This is how I want to be. I'm not going to let this, you know, I'm never going to be that heavy again. Yeah, that didn't actually happen. Uh, some some things in my life didn't go the way they were supposed to go. And uh, suddenly working out, suddenly eating right didn't 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 take the priority that it, that it was supposed to. And I just let myself go. And 308 pounds is definitely not where I wanted to be. And it was, you know, we, we started and like, I think the very first week I lost like six pounds or something. And I was just like, Oh my God, this is great. I need to keep doing this and I need to keep doing this right away. And, and it just got, it, it just, it, it did. It's sm- it, it sto- it snowballed from there. And the other thing at cuddles, I would say is you'd be amazed how easy you can add activity into your day. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, just parking a little bit further from the build from the building when you go somewhere when you're going to work or going to the far bathroom from where you're working where from where your desk is or where wherever you work you know th- things like that that just or you know just setting aside a little bit of time where you where you go for a walk at the end uh, of the day or something and it, and it just that just doing that is 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 a great way to start into this and and i'm willing to bet you that if you do that and you start seeing a little bit of results you'll figure out ways that you can add a little bit more and add a little bit more and and it doesn't have to be this just complete shock to your system and or you're not like yeah don't don't think you're gonna just go out and start running 5ks or something and and (laughs) and and hurt yourself or anything like that but it's it's really easy to kind of put that stuff into your into your routine without even thinking about it. And the last thing is sleep is really important. Yes. So I, I, there are so many people that like take time, they, they want to try and fit all this stuff and in, in their day. And then they stop taking enough time to recuperate time to sleep. And some of the best results that I saw was when I was actually getting sleep and if I wasn't getting enough sleep, I, I I would see it in the in the weight loss. I I wouldn't see the same results that I was seeing when I was when I was getting the rest I needed, and I and that was something that floored me and has floored pretty much anybody that I've ever talked to about this because they just that's not something that you normally consider to be part of the the kind of um, equation when it comes to to getting fit and healthy. Yeah. yeah. One dr- thing. Dr- oh. oh, no, sorry. Drav and uh, Dresden. What is this sleep you're talking about? Oh, sleep. Um, one thing I want to piggyback off of that real quick is we talk about the scale all the time. But if you're really starting to lose weight, get get a measuring tape. It's intimidating, but get a measuring tape. Pay attention to how your clothes fit. Like this is a medium and it's almost too big. Even though my scale has been stagnant, this is great um, because as you're getting active, like that muscle fat thing, it's it's legit, guys. So the scale is awesome, but don't be deterred. Start paying attention to your clothes. Or like the greatest thing when um, Eve just picked up the weight loss challenge again in the well played, you know, she said measure yourself, and it's so true because you're you're going to lose pounds, but inches are a huge part as well yep. to what you do. So if you're starting off, don't don't just f- focus on that scale because after a while, it's gonna kind of just taper. <laughs> and. And one thing to, to expound on that, and then we'll start talking about Hearthstone for everybody that's we'll here to actually here. talk about card games. Um, having having been involved with um, with a company that helped folks with weight loss for, for several, several years, one of, one of the things that I really took away from it was exactly what T just said. And it doesn't have to be pounds. It doesn't have to be inches. We, we called them non-scale victories. And they don't even have to do with it could be your your favorite old shirt fits a little bit better. Or how about, you know, you're able to walk up the stairs to work or your your coworkers bring in donuts. I know um, I know for some of those, I, I know we have some people in the chat room that work in a call center environment, which um, Cuddle Wife does. And good Lord, I don't know if it's all of them or just hers and the others that I've heard about. 
But gosh, these places seem to be an entire culture based around food. And it's always someone's birthday, and it's always like bring food in, and there's always donuts and Hot cookies. And- Guys, it is a huge victory for for a, a journey in weight loss or in health to just walk by that thing of donuts. Or to have one donut instead of the <laughs> six that I may have had one day <laughs> when I was at work. Because they were there, and I couldn't let them go to waste, right? Um. Celebrate the little victories in your journey, because like Mage, Mage said very, very eloquently, that little thing, that first little thing of losing a couple pounds or feeling a little bit better, that's, that's addictive, and you will love it, and you will, you will realize that, that, that feeling better is, is better. But let's talk about Hearthstone. What's, yes. What's what's going on? We gotta I, I, I gotta say, I, I very, very um was was very selfishly happy that you were coming on. Because yes. I will admit <laughs> I, I, I streamed a lot of Hearthstone. I usually did like one or two days a week of Hearthstone laddering. And I will say this is the first expansion that I did not pre purchase. And last month was the first month that I did not hit twenty. Uh. Um I have been with with the new I got I got a little overwhelmed with it and it, what what would you say to maybe some of those that haven't jumped into Ungoro yet are they too far behind are they are they lost has the has the entire meta changed what's what's going on with the state of Hearthstone right now I would say that so I I started playing Hearthstone right before whispers of the old gods came out last year so mar march 2016 is when i started never played a collectible card game before that and uh i i I fell in love with the game right away but there has always been uh some what's the what's the best way of putting it i guess there's been some feeling that it's not quite where it needs to be and i would tell you that i think what those people were referring to or what they were hoping to see is where the game is right now the game right now is in a fantastic place in in my estimation the there the the most recent uh meta report from vicious syndicate which is a a website that collects game data from players to kind of analyze what the meta looks like in the game said that there is not a single deck that has a better than 52% win rate at the legend rank, which means that there are roughly roughly there. There's not one go-to deck anymore. Like in most of last year, I'm out there. Shaman, (laughs) <laughs> shaman was like the shaman was the class and they were it was aggro shaman and then it was mid-range shaman then it was aggro shaman again when means when mean streets of gadgets and came out it was pirate warrior for a while and then it was aggro shaman again and then you, you know so, so you always had these like this one just overpowering deck that that was like that was going to be the deck that if you were serious about playing Hearthstone, if you were serious about laddering, this is the deck that you would play. And there's not that that deck doesn't really exist anymore. They they they've added the the cards that they've added in the journey to Angoro, along with the rotation of League of Explorers and uh, Black Rock Mountain and the Grand Tournament taking those out and adding the Angoro cards has made just a kind of a wild west meta where you can pretty much do there, there, there are literally probably at least one, if not two decks for just about every class in the game that you can play and can legitimately do well with. And I, I, there, there, there was never a point before journey to Angoro in 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 a time that I've played, where the, where you could say that, the the only one left out in the cold right now really is Warlock. Warlock is not doing so hot, but everybody else is doing really well. 
and, and it it's... always gets shafted for warlocks. <laughs> wow, her stone everywhere. So we've, the new expansion then sounds like it's pretty balanced then. There's no one deck that can get you up to the top. you got to kind of work for it. And if you go up against someone who's even halfway decent, you, you might get knocked back a little bit. Is that changing the way you're playing the game? Like, are you finding yourself having to pull out some new tricks and tips? Or are you just coming at it the same way you're, you're always doing it? What has this expansion done for you? It's so, so it, it's trying to find the deck that, that I like to play and that I feel comfortable playing. So like last month, I spent uh, the middle part of the month basically playing about half a dozen to a dozen different decks just to see which deck I liked, which one seemed to work well. And, and just the ones that I could, could figure out. And, and it seems like, you know, it should be pretty easy to just, Oh, you could just find a deck online and you can just play it and things go well. And that, but that's not necessarily the case. You, you, there, a lot of them are, you know, basically, Decks have kind of a certain way they should be played and a way you should use certain certain cards to maximize the value they can provide in a game. And it's it, figuring out how that works, especially when there's this whole influx of new cards, makes it makes it really interesting. And the the one of the biggest changes, I think, was the addition of the quest cards. Now that was a new type of legendary for this expansion beyond just a legendary minion. They had this legendary quest card, which said, you know, if you perform this, you get a reward of, of this ridiculously great minion pretty much is what they are in most cases. And those created a whole new set of decks that didn't exist before those quest cards existed. So, for instance, uh, the Quest Warrior bill is a kind of a, an adaptation of what was considered Control Warrior before, which is I'm going to get a bunch of armor and I'm going to get these really big minions and I'm just going to beat you senseless. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to basically kill anything you put on the board and, and then, you know, just just wear wear you out. But now you've got. The quest says you need to play seven taunt minions. So suddenly you have a deck that has a bunch of taunt minions, probably more than any control deck had before. And once you play those seven, you get Sulphuros, which is Ragnaros's weapon. And you oh, get wow. to equip the weapon and it changes your hero power from a defensive one, which is, you know, armoring up to doing eight damage to a random target every turn. And so that completely changes the game when, when, once the, the quest warrior gets his, his sulfuros weapon and changes his hero power. Oh, wow. Um, so it's kind of been brought up a little bit in chat, which is why I want to talk about it. There's always that discussion of Hearthstone is a pay to play game. If you want to go big, you got to pay money. This expansion, like, I think was one of the most expensive expansions they were saying, if you wanted to actually be competitive, what, what would your advice be for someone coming in who maybe doesn't have as much or maybe any money to really spend on Hearthstone? I mean, you can grind out the coins, you can get the decks that way, but mm -hmm. what other advice I guess would you have if you wanted to kind of get up to that competitive level? So it, it really is about getting the, the cards and so because this is a card expansion and because there's two legendaries in each class now uh, previous previous card expansions there was always one legendary and it was a minion legendary and, and you could usually kind of figure out which ones were the best ones to get and and, and those and and like mean streets of gadgets and was really great because kind of the strongest legendaries in that were tri-class legendaries it was kazakus yeah. it was aya blackpaw it was uh don honcho and those could be used in multiple decks in multiple you know in in three different class deck in three different classes 
now you you have to you know depending on what you want to play you would have to potentially get uh, a class card a specific class card and then you'd have to get kind of all the cards that go around it and, and so because of kind of the rarity of the cards and how they're offered in the card packs it would it would have taken you i think I think uh, BlizzPro was saying something in the neighborhood of 350 packs to potentially open a single copy of all of the all of the cards for Journey to Angoro, the entire 135 card expansion. Oh, wow! If you're playing on a budget, you don't have you 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 don't you're you're not going to end up getting all 135 cards. What you what you probably end up needing to do is whatever whatever you can kind of afford to get would be you know the place you would start and then you try and build one or two decks specifically with the cards that you pulled. I have a I have a friend of mine who who's kind of more new to the game and and he he uh, he got a few packs. And so then it was like, well, let's look at what cards you do have. And he ended up getting a lot of elemental cards. So I was like, all right, let's let's try and see if we can build you an elemental shaman deck, because that's that's one of those kind of uh, one of one of those decks that you can actually do pretty well with if you if you've got if you've got some of the cards. And so it's it's a lot about if you. If you're playing on a budget, you're, you're probably looking at at certain decks and certain classes that you're going to want to play, and then there's going to be certain, you know, there's certain decks that you're just probably not going to get to play until you've grinded more coins to buy more packs, or or you've saved up enough dust that you can craft the like a quest legend, a quest card that you want, or something like that. Hunter is you. I was gonna say Hunter is usually kind of the the most budget friendly class, and there is there there is definitely uh, like the mid range shot mid range Hunter deck is usually a deck. Uh, most of the lists that that are going around right now with mid range Hunter don't have a legendary in them. Oh, so a lot of times those are gonna be. The, the, I mean, that's the place you're going to start is you're going to look at, at quests that are, are decks that don't have a legendary in them. And, and hopefully they've got, you know, they top out at, you know, commons and rares and maybe a few epic level cards. And, and so then the cost to, to, to craft the individual cards that you don't have aren't aren't as aren't as expensive to to get. But th there's that, and then like shaman might have like a there. There's the quest that allows you to play murlocs to get mega fin. But if you don't have the the shaman quest yeah. to get the murlocs, you could still play a murloc deck. And, and what you would do is you'd basically flood the board with 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 murlocs, and then use bloodlust to win. So it's just playing playing uh, a little bit different style of murloc shaman that doesn't rely on the quest could still get you there Carlos, i think you had a question oh, yes um it was actually it's been brought up in chat um for for those that may have been around for a little while and have have cards and i'm actually really curious about this because i waffle over it um Totem had asked, there's, or it had stated, there's always the option to disenchant wild cards. And then I think T and I both kind of fall on the hoarder side of things. Yes. Like, I, e I know that I can dust my gold cards, but no, because they're gold and I want to keep them. However, looking to wild cards is presuming like i have no interest in playing wild i, I really and truly don't i want to i want to i i know where my vision of what i want to do in hearthstone is i want to play standard on the ladder that's it i have no interest in arena i'm bad at deck building i find decks i learn how to play them i play them um i i i simply don't have the time to dive into deck building and that may be true for for others as well or there probably wouldn't be websites around listing meta decks um, I will I will make tweaks and throw in my own stuff. 
Um, but what do you think of the option of just disenchanting wild cards? Like just get dusting all of or I'm saying disenchant I'm mixing yeah. my I'm mixing my blizzard terminology here. <laughs> but what do you think about dusting all of so, the wild cards to give you a little bit of boost in dust? Because I know they do go down in value once they hit wild though. Or they, do they? Am well, I wrong about that? They So Blizzard has said that they now with this rotation, because there's now five expansions that are considered wild only expansions, that they're going to put more of an emphasis or bring the a, a bigger profile to the wild side of the game than they have previously. We saw that this week, actually, with the Heroic Tavern Brawl was done with wild decks as opposed to standard decks. That's the first time that's happened as well. I'm I'm like you when I when I say that I once I want to collect all the cards even yeah. though like I started well after uh, goblins versus gnomes after after Naxxramas all that that first that first rotation year there's pretty much that entire goblins versus gnomes expansion I don't have any of the cards for but. I don't. I don't think I would recommend to anybody to to disenchant wild cards, and there and the reason for that is those wild cards can still be used for tavern brawls each week oh, because the tavern brawl format I is like wild. This. Because you'd have the option as well when when they do things like like I'll play games in the uh, on the in the wild format just periodically as well when I. When I when I reach a certain point, uh, playing on the standard ladder, and I or I want to kind of I guess protect my rank on standard. I sometimes play wild to complete my quests. Oh, yeah. So I I tend not to want to do that. For for somebody that's looking to try and get dust, and what what I was told initially, and and I would agree with. Is I wouldn't dis I would disenchant gold cards because the the amount of dust you get from disenchanting a non gold card is tr trivial. I guess it would be the best way of putting it. I mean, you have a like a gold common card you could disenchant and for forty dust and actually create another common card. Whereas you disenchant a common card, you get five dust. So you'd have to disenchant eight, eight of them just yep. to be able to create one other common card the the extra dust that you get for disenchanting a gold card is going to go a lot further than disenchanting a whole bunch of of regular cards that that maybe you're not going to use and, and i just like having the ability to use those cards when when we're when you when there's a tavern brawl or when i want to try something out you know like we we don't have Re, Reno Jackson's not in in <laughs> in standard anymore, but I still I I only played with him a little bit before he got rotated out, and there might be a time where I'm gonna I I think it might be fun to just go into wild and try and create a Reno Jackson deck and 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 just play it and I don't necessarily want to have to recraft him because I I wanted to get that 400 yeah, dust yeah. to 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 make something else the gold cards and the non-gold cards are exactly the same yeah, yeah. the the car the card is is i don't the care. only difference it's gold <laughs> it, it's gold it's got a cool animation to it no i get i get that but, but I, I have the dream i know we've all if you if you watch hearthstone streams for a while and you've watched any larger streamers You've probably seen them play an all gold deck at some point. <laughs> and that is so cool. And I want to do that one day. And I'm so far away from it. But it's going to happen because it's just pretty. Yes. it is. It, it, trust me, it is very pretty. But I, I would also tell you that the, the, the dust that you can get from the gold cards will go a lot further towards getting you what you need in standard. Even even though they look so pretty. I, uh, I, I, I've actually... In addition to my my NA account, I started a completely free to play. I'm not going to pay a single penny <laughs> for anything on EU. So I started a second account on EU, 
and I I'm just leveling with with the cards you get, and then the packs that I earn through gold and 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 various ways you can earn earn Promotions packs. And things, and yep. I it, it, it pains me, but I have disenchanted every gold card I've gotten there that that I didn't have that I that I you know that I had uh, a regular common card for because I could use the dust to craft something else that I didn't have. Now, now here's a question. Um, and and this is since you since you mentioned Europe, I was I wasn't really planning on asking this, but um, <laughs> since you mentioned the uh, that you know you you can easily Hearthstone is a free to play game. You don't have to pay for copies of it on different on different regions. All you have to do is log in. Um, right. As a a player that that's trying to get competitive, and this is this is maybe probably above most of the most of the folks that may be listening to this. Um, have you ever? Do you consider your experience on the EU ladder adds to your experience on the Americas? And have you ever considered? getting into the uh the asia region because i know from watching like the the hearthstone championships and watching a lot of the regionals i'm, I'm an addict to watching like staying <laughs> up at four o'clock in the morning watching the daggum like korean hearthstone regionals um i know that the metas are very uh, europe tends to be very similar to us although with their own nuances but That's asia true. tends to play an entirely different play style is that something that you would all recommend to somebody that's looking to get into competitive? Is it something like have you ever considered spooling up an Asia account and just seeing how you would do? I so the reason I started the EU account was I wanted to see wanted to go through the 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 new player experience again because it had been a while since I had done that. And I I I think it, I think it was it's interesting to see that like you were saying there the meta is different on the different servers from from what I understand the the meta specifically for the Asian Asian region tends to be the most aggressive of the of the three kind of metas that that if I remembering correctly I hadn't thought about doing another another account in Asia I just I wanted to see what it was like to not put any money. I, I've invested a fair amount of money into the <laughs> into the uh, North American account because, uh, as evil attest, once I got a taste for the game and was like, "Oh, I want to play this, but I don't have this card. I need this card. I need to buy a bunch of packs, or I need to buy all these <laughs> other expansions, and I need to do this." And she's like, "Oh God." Why did you get into this game? <laughs> so I, so so the EU thing was I, you know, I'm still allowed to invest in my North American account, but I I wanted to see what it was like to play as somebody who couldn't spend any money on their account and and see and and feel, I guess how difficult it can be. <laughs> um, it it is it is difficult, but I also think that it it can make you a better player specifically because you can't just say I want to play this meta deck. And so I have invested all this money into my account. So I have all these cards. And so then it's just a matter of learning the deck. Not only do I not have that on the, on the EU account, I, I have to, I have to figure out what cards what, what what kind of deck can I build with the cards that I do have? And then how does that play? So it's not just a, is this deck good? Okay, I'll just copy this and then figure out how it plays. I have to like make the whole deck. And like, it, it's like, so all my decks actually look somewhat similar because what I try and do is I try and pick the most powerful cards that I have. And a lot of the, the, the powerful car, cards, at least... From the classic standpoint, a lot of them are neutral cards, so you can slot them into all the decks. And so that's where where you kind of start, and then you're like, well, what are the really powerful cards for each class? And then you throw those in, and and that's and then that's just kind of how you how you it goes. And so I, I think it's 
I think it's playing when you don't have like all the resources and you have to improvise with the limited resources you do have. I think that is what can potentially help you become a better player. And, and it, it, it can get frustrating because <laughs> you will get matched up against people that have every card and they can have, they can pull out nothing but legendaries on you. And it, I have tempered my expectations on that EU account. I play it just kind of for fun. And, uh, you know, I complete quests and I do the tavern brawl each week. And, and uh, you know, just slowly but surely I buy a few packs and, and just open them up. And I'm like, oh, I think I can maybe start to craft <laughs> this a, a new deck now because I've got a couple cards. And, and so that that's kind of where I think the the benefit of having a, a, a free-to-play account or a limited kind of resource account w- where it can help you. And, and, and pro players, I think they do have accounts across all three servers because you can earn HCT points across all the servers, if I, if I understand correctly. And they also are scouting out the meta for those other, other uh, regions so that they, when they go up against those players at tournaments they know they they have a better idea of what to expect yep you know if, if asian player if the asian meta is really aggressive they're they're potentially using different cards than maybe a a, a similar deck uh, on the north american server they might use the card in a different way let me ask one more. I have one more quick question. We've been talking a lot about competitive. We probably have some people, though, who maybe haven't touched this game yet and just want to find out what it's about. So instead of the competitive side, what would your 30-second elevator pitch for someone who's just wanting to get into Hearthstone? It doesn't have to be 30 seconds. That's just <laughs> my spiel that I say all the Timer time. Timer starts now. Go. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think... I would say that I, I'm a big fan of Hearthstone, and I think that it is a very easy game to kind of wrap your head around if you if if you can sit down and kind of there, there's a tutorial that you go through when you first start the game. I think it does a relatively decent job of introducing you to facets the the most basic facets of the game after you after that i i think you know if i think it's a great game to to interact with people i mean it's a great game that you can pick up and play in a for a few minutes you can play it on a mobile device you can play it on a computer you you know there's firesides where you basically can get a bunch of people together in the same place and play against each other it's it's uh it's just it's a really fun game and i think it's a fun game to kind of talk about as well and yeah, and, yeah. and and there's always usually like these stories of people having these ridiculous things happen or just uh, completely unexpected <laughs> things happen and and while so just on a side note i'm like a a fantasy baseball fan and nobody wants to talk about fantasy baseball other no than tigers. other fantasy baseball people, but people are more willing to listen to me talk about Hearthstone than they will <laughs> listen to me talk to me about baseball or fantasy baseball, because it's not as relatable, I guess. I mean, people have stories like video game stories where they've had something ridiculous happen and you just can't believe it or how the heck did I win this or how the heck did I lose this sort of thing? And, and, and Hearthstone is really great in that it's, I think it's easy to pick up. I think it's easy to kind of start to get the basics to, and I think it's a really complex game to master. And the, so I have the utmost respect for all the pro players out there that month in month out grind to the top legend ranks and then go to these big tournaments where, you know, we talk about a, a ladder meta, but there's also tournament metas that are completely different than the yeah. ladder, ladder meta because, you know, you're limited to the deck, the, the deck, you know, I'm going to bring 
one deck for each of four classes, and then you get to tell me which one of these four classes I don't get to play. And, you know, I get to do the same to you, and then we play a best of three series. And it's just, it's, it, it's really, it's, it's really interesting and, and definitely not something I thought I would, I would like when I first picked it up, but I was like, there's, there's people I know that are playing it. And they were like, and I have a bunch of friends that play magic, the gathering and yes. they, they tried to get me into that. And I was like, I don't understand this at all. <laughs> this does not make any sense. And actually I, I, one of them, went over the basics with me again this last week and it made a ton more sense now that I played <laughs> Hearthstone for a year than it, that it did than it did before but I but I think that um, the I, I I just think it's a, a very a very cool game to kind of share with people yes. and, and so like, uh, there's tons of people that are streaming it. Uh, you know, I'd li I'd like to say I'm the only one streaming it, but actually <laughs> Hearthstone, I think, is probably one of the most popular games to stream on Twitch. But it it's it it it's interesting. I mean, I watch a lot of uh, Twitch streams or Hearthstone streams, and it just there's something new about the game too that you find all the time. So, some crazy interaction or some crazy thing that happened and and it, it's like you know i've never seen that before <laughs> constantly evolving but i do have one more question i know we're running a little bit long but you said something that i wanted to i wanted to, i wanted to specifically ask about okay you, oh, i've no. said lots of things i can only imagine what this has to do with oh this is gonna be fun um you had said that you're not allowed to spend money on your EU account. And you had <laughs> said that you have spent a little bit of money on your North American account. Yes. Being someone that is uh, is yourself married to a wonderful, incredible, and very understanding <laughs> young lady. <laughs> do you have any tips for those that may be married or in a domestic partnership of some sort? in uh, convincing their significant other that Hearthstone is a worthy and worthwhile endeavor. How can mm. you give us your 30-second elevator pitch <laughs> on telling your spouse why you absolutely have to have another 50 packs? There's Well, I would say there's first, there's a lot of begging involved and uh, <laughs> negotiation. Um no, Eve has been incredibly supportive of this, and she has been very understanding when when I am like, oh, there's a new expansion coming out. I'd really like to get the pre-order and then get another 50 packs besides once the they open up the regular the regular uh, buying of packs. I it was just yeah, I, I I would say that, um, I don't know. She she just is really supportive of of of, of my kind of interest in the, in the game, and so it doesn't actually take a ton <laughs> for me to. I'm just like, I really didn't quite get what I was hoping to get, or these are the things that I want to get, and I didn't get them yet, and so can I please? Please get something and I will not eat out at work at all for the next two weeks or month or whatever. And so, yeah, that, those are the those are the sort of things, I guess, that 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 we talk about. But I mean, I try and be as responsible as possible. I was probably a little bit um, over the top with this particular expansion with the pack investment because <laughs> I I. I didn't have the best of luck with the pre-purchased 50 packs and I was really excited about the expansion. And, uh, so I, I kind of, um, you know, asked, begged, pleaded, <laughs> and she did say yes. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Well, well, a huge thank you to Eve for supporting Mage's yes. possibly somewhat obsessive Hearthstone habit. Um, not po- not possibly. <laughs> it probably is obsessive. And, exactly uh, how far into the overly, ex- you know, how how far into the danger zone of obsessive it is, <laughs> that's to be determined, but... Oh, wow. Well, guys, this, this brings us to a wonderful and magical part of the show where we get to do shout-outs. Mage, do you have anybody that you'd like to shout out this week? I would love to shout out to my my lovely better half, Eve. Obviously, I I would not, you you know, I I would say that I would not be here if it wasn't for her, but... Yeah, that, that's actually probably true. I, you know, that that just happens. As anybody that that has a a better half, they they know that that's that's probably the case. Uh, I would also I would like to shout out to all the all all the people that have supported my my Twitch streaming. I I am have been blessed during the the six months that I've been streaming that that I have had so many wonderful people uh, you know come by the stream, follow me on my stream and and just show up because I I didn't I, I wanted to do it and but I never expected that anybody would actually show up and want to watch me play hearthstone. I mean especially since, you know, there are so many other people that are doing it. And uh, as we talked about, I guess, briefly before the show cuddles, I, I was one of I, I got the Twitch affiliate status with that first initial release of invitations that that Monday afternoon two weeks ago. And I could not have been more surprised when that happened. And it, it is all because people show up every every time and and i am am so lucky that 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 they do that so those those are my shout outs (laughs) right on t what about you um shout out to um dj truth sayer graham he we had him on last week but i popped into his stream and he was very very supportive of me being there um, very overwhelming because I am a very quiet type, but it was very nice to watch him and have a little bit of chat with him. And um, shout out to those of you who are on my Mass Effect adventure. Although last stream was a bit awkward, it is tons of fun. Thank you for coming and watching me um, kill some, although I haven't done too much killing, but I'm a specter now. We're going to see how that goes. Very, very not and very far in the game yet. So very new in the game, but tons of fun. Thank you guys for, for doing that. Cuddles. Right on. Well, for me, guys, first and foremost, huge, huge shout out to Mage Death. Yes. Um, I, I can remember after after BlizzCon, I guess it was t- two years ago, last year? I don't know. Um, 2015, probably. When when we when we talked about you getting into streaming, and and then we had like we had a Skype conversation, and and oh. Eve even came on it, and that was that was so much fun, and I probably rambled on for far too long. And told you a bunch of stuff that you've already figured out was complete and utter nonsense. Um, because we all, like, everyone's stream is different. And and what I find is wisdom and knowledge for my stream is complete and utter bunk for other people's streams. Um, guys, if you're at all into Hearthstone and you're not following uh, twitch.tv slash death, there will be a link in the show notes. Um, I've shouted them out a couple times in chat. If one of my mods, uh, Totem or T, if you want to do a shout out command form right now, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and also, a huge shout out to Ivalani for supporting this man's habit and for allowing us a little bit of uh, his time. I know that your time is, as a couple is very important, and I appreciate you loaning to him to us this evening. Yes, thank you. Um, outside of that, thank you to everyone that came and supported my Cinco de Drinko stream. Oh, wow. Um, the the shame, the consternation, and the uh, the pizza ordered from DT were all beautiful, beautiful things. Um, guys, I really appreciate. It. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, attempting attempting to kill myself on stream. Not really. Don't. I didn't say that. I need to edit that out. 
Um, <laughs> that would be against t- Twitch TOS. Um, but no, we streamed for eight hours and had a really good time. Um, also, a huge thank you to uh, to Graham and everyone else that uh, that has supported this stream. Um, you guys, you guys are all all incredible and amazing. Cathbert, yes, I remember most of the stream. Um, guys, that is going to do it for this week. All important iTunes five star reviews. If you enjoy what we're doing for the Game Case Show, now if you didn't like it, if my voice was off key, if I don't know. If, if you like blondes rather than brunettes and Tarts <laughs> doesn't do it for you, leave two stars for Hearthstone. What's that? I play Pokemon TCG. A, a podcast that's entirely about ragging on Hearthstone via various Pokemon memes. Major Death, where can people find you on the internet? I'm on Twitter uh, at Major Death. And on Twitch, twitch.tv slash death. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings, 8 p.m., you will find me on Twitch playing Hearthstone. Arena, ladder. I'm hoping to get, actually, people that uh, to come on the stream with me and, and play together because I think that's a lot of fun. So if, if you're into that and would like to do that, definitely come by and, and we can make that happen. That would be fantastic. <laughs> you would like to? Like, I would I'm love here. to have you come by, Cuddles. The two of us taking on on whatever the ladder throws at us. That would be great. <laughs> terrifying. You're so far up the ladder than I've ever... Like, I didn't even know. Like, I'm at one place on the ladder, and then it slowly disappears into the clouds. And Mage is like 10 rungs above me up there. I can't even see him anymore. It's literally he's disappeared into the heavens. It's uh and yeah. As Eva point Eve pointed out, Mage is on Central Time, so that's eight Central, yes. six Pacific, nine Eastern. Yes. I forget Mountain exists. You mathed. I'm that's mathed. incredible. I love that, that like Tour Arts always goes to 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 Pacific because I have to. Of our it's wow a CTR. Server. Yeah. <laughs> I have to. That that is that is incredible, guys. Thank thank you so much for hanging out um, to both the chat room, to Tour Hearts, yeah, fan, and to our guest. Fantastic page. chat room. Yes. Oh gosh, yes. We this had a fantastic is, guest. Yeah. No. This this was more than I ever could have expected um, out of out of a conversation about a wonderful expansion. Um, so, Mage, thank you so much, Mage. T O. Oh, do we? Is that a thing? There's a thing in the show notes that I don't know is a thing. But I it might not be a thing. It might have been a, a copy thing. Hold on. Nope, that's that's not a thing. I'm Ron Burgundy. I forgot. <laughs> I thought I edited all the things out. Well, next week we will have Seraphus to talk about Con Before the Storm. Yes. Nice. We will have the king of bacon. Of bacon. The bacon king. Bacon king's bacon coming king. on. The one of the oh, what is there? I'm I'm not even I'm not even trying to do a promo on. Something that I don't remember. Uh, but guys, oh, by the way, I do not have the bumper to play, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually play it at the uh, at the front of the show. Um, but guys, if you're not aware of Calm Before the Storm and you're going to BlizzCon, just go Google it right now. I don't have the link handy. The bumper will be in the show. Um, Calm Before the Storm is a wonderful, wonderful event that happens Thursday night before BlizzCon. They are great people. They put on an amazing event. I cannot say what I'm doing there, but I will be doing something. Um, and it is Seraphis's birthday at Seraphis on uh, on Twitter. Go wish him a happy birthday! And uh, their their Kickstarter is fully funded. They're working on stretch goals, and damn it, they have some incredible ones this year. They 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 really really do. Um, so guys, thank you so much, Mage T. Say bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Game Case Show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. You can find Cuddles at The Game Case, Tour Arts at Tour Arts, and you can find the show at The Game Case Show. Join us live Sunday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash thegamecase. 
Archived episodes are available at youtube.com slash thegamecase. The theme music for the show is Celtic Impulse by Kevin McLeod of Incomputech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.